do 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 hello boys and girls it's medium format time <laughs> excuse me i found chocolate bars on sale at the grocery store i bought 10 of them i shouldn't have done that but i won't eat them all at once uh anyway Back to, <laughs> back to topic. You know, the one video that I should have made, and everybody asked me after I uploaded all the videos and the reviews on the medium format Fujifilm, a GFXR. I'm going to call it the GFXR. Why do we need to put the 50 in there? All right, well, just everybody knows what the GFXR is, right? I don't need the 50 in there. To compare this camera with the GFX 50S, compare and contrast. And I, I never thought I would own two medium format digital cameras so it seems uh, slightly weird i should have brought in the tilting viewfinder but i think everybody knows what the tilting viewfinder is it does not actually come with the tilt adapter which is an additional 500 dollars i wished it would it lets you remove the viewfinder and put it between the camera and the viewfinder and it uh, gives you this uh, gooseneck um, tiltable and adjustable viewfinder and i actually grew up with a medium format twin lens reflex like i had a roly i had some yoshiko um 124 mat g's which you'd actually look down on the camera like this and i i, I grew up with that and uh, i love actually tilting the viewfinder up on the gfx 50s so there's one advantage also too it's a huge advantage that you can also tilt it this way for a portrait orientation and use the vertical grip and actually look down through the viewfinder with it angled like this. It's, uh, it's wonderful and extremely comfortable. Um, but let's do a compare and contrast uh, between the two. Obviously, since we're talking about the exact same sensor in both cameras, we're basically talking about removing the engine out of an SUV, for example, and slapping it, uh, the same engine, into a little roadster car when it comes to the GFX uh, 50R. Um, same sensor, same image processing engine. Let's talk about the advantages of the GFX 50S over the GFX 50R. Like I already said, the viewfinder with the tilt adapter is absolutely wonderful. The price has come down now. I think the standard price now, I could be wrong, but everybody else is currently selling the GFX 50S for $5,500 instead of the 6500 that it has been for quite a long time since it came out and I've been using the GFX 50S for what what has it now been like a year and a half been enjoying it immensely I actually love large heavy cameras I know most people don't so but obviously heavier cameras actually stabilize the camera more and when it comes to medium format which has undeniably more shutter shake in other words and I have really good hand holding techniques you actually have better uh, capabilities for slower shutter speeds with a heavier camera, especially with a vertical grip attached, and especially with a large lens attached, like, for example, the 250mm telephoto lens for the uh, GFX or the G-series mounts. Currently, like I said, there's seven lenses, and the same lenses fit on both cameras. There is, and Fujifilm showed this at Photokina, a tiny little 50mm pancake, which will be a 40mm field of view equivalent coming out sometime in the earlier part of 2019. So, additionally so, on getting back to the comparison and the advantage of the GFX 50S, you also, of course, have a vertical grip option. I think that's rather obvious. You also have a top LCD display, an ink display, with a, an illuminator button, which is actually quite wonderful. Uh, you can tether either one of these cameras. A USB-C connector, which is wonderful. I have a, bought a new tether cable for the GFX 50S. The tether cable connector is right here on the bottom, which I wished it was on the side. That's actually the only thing I can actually gripe about this camera about, is that the tethering... Uh, point is on the bottom of the camera. You have the exact same battery in both, and there is nobody on this earth, unless they're absolutely insane and stupid, that's ever going to complain about battery life on either one of these cameras. I can tell a slight advantage on battery life on the R than I can on the S, which makes perfectly logical sense, but it's not that much. It's almost indiscernible. I know for, uh, from uh, the past year and a half of use with the 50S, and go all day long and it will use exactly one battery. I'm talking about out in the field all day long. Of course, actually how you have your view mode set will greatly determine 
uh, how long the battery lasts. You should set it out in the field to where nothing will be on unless you put your eye up next to the viewfinder. Um, you also do have the vertical tilting LCD display, which you do not have on the 50R, so that's a big advantage for portrait orientation. We're going down low with the camera and tilting the LCD up for like macro photography. So that is an advantage on the 50S. Uh, like I said, the reduced price now at $5,500 makes it basically only $1,000 more than the $4,500 GFXR. The other difference and the last difference is a 0.85 uh, viewfinder magnification versus 0.77 on the R. So 0.85 versus 0.77. It's really indiscernible. The eye relief on the 50R is incredible. It's really, really good. And I wear glasses that I can back my face way the hell off of the back of the camera with the eye relief on the 50R. Here's the GFX-R advantages over that of uh, the 50S. Obviously, uh, we're talking about weight and size. Obviously, uh, you know, you, you think this camera is rather large, but look, it's, well, you know, it's smaller, but it's still large. It's actually an extremely lightweight camera body. The size, um, well, you don't actually have the big uh, ergo on the front, and you don't actually have the big uh, a bump on the back for the uh, back of the LCD that sticks out of the back of the 50S, but, I mean, the weight and size are smaller. I do notice a dampened shutter mech. I don't think it's necessarily, and I don't know if Fujifilm has acknowledged this, it probably has the same shutter mech, but it is dampened insofar as where it is positioned. It might be sitting on rubber bumpers or on a spring uh, on a uh, spring setup, but I do notice that the shutter mech is dampened and the noise is a lot quieter on the uh, 50, uh, the 50 R here than it is on the S. Um, the price, obviously, at four thousand five hundred dollars. I mean, if you priced them a Mia Leaf at nineteen thousand dollars, medium format digital has been insanely expensive for ages and ages. One great advantage to me, and I can't stand these uh, Hasselblad slash Pentax. Uh, camera strap lugs is we actually have standard strap lugs on the uh, 50R. Thank God Fujifilm for doing that. You also too have an autofocus assist lamp on the uh, 50R. Um, obviously, I mean, to, to talk about the foregone conclusions on both, the GFX 50S is obviously the, uh, the, house, the house cat or the studio dog. You know, the way it's designed with the vertical grip and the tilting viewfinder, I mean, it's obviously idealized for that. Not that either one of these isn't perfect in the studio. The GFXR is obviously the street slash field sweeper and for travel. I mean, that's kind of a foregone conclusion of uh, obviousness and making that statement. But, I mean, we need to point out every difference and nuance between the two. Like I said, we're both looking at the exact same sensor and same image processing engine on both. And like I said before already, the same battery on both. So those are the differences between the GFX-R and the uh, GFX-50S. Um, there are $1,000 difference between the two now. Um, both have dual SD card slots, obviously so. Um, I've had this one, of course this one's mine, only came in a couple days ago, but I've been testing this camera now for a week and a half. I had a borrowed copy of it before when I was making all those videos that I uploaded the other day. Um, absolutely wonderful. I've been waiting for a compact medium format digital camera that is at an uh, economical price because medium format digital is really expensive. And now we're looking at, I mean, $4,500, we're looking at $2,000 less than the, uh, the pro-grade bodies from Nikon and Canon, like the Nikon D5 and the... Uh, was the Canon X1D? Um, Two thousand dollars less than a full frame pro body. That's kind of amazing for medium format. Um, so those are the differences between the uh, 50S and the 50R on the GFX series from Fujifilm. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Um, mainly, it's the tilting LCD, which I mean, I have no issues with the fact that I don't have a portrait orientation flip out LCD on uh, the 50R. Um, I am a huge Boone fan, huge fan of the, of, uh, the tilting. Uh, of course, like I said, it does not come with the camera when you buy it. You have to buy that separate for 500 and I think it's 550 bucks. Let you remove the viewfinder and attach it and tilt it and swivel it. I absolutely love that to death. Everybody that buys a 50S should buy that, that damn adapter. 
But I mean, other than that, I mean, you're not going to really notice any difference on the viewfinder magnification. You're just not. Um, are there any really substantial differences other than the fact that you can attach a second battery in a vertical grip for shooting uh, more comfortably in portrait orientation on the S? Yeah, I mean, yes, you do have also, uh, one thing last I forgot to mention is you have DSLR type ergos. You do have a more comfortable grip here. However, if you buy that grip belt, or what we call a hand strap in the United States, the GB1, GB001, which is made for the X-T1, but actually fits perfectly, perfectly, and is adjustable for the 50R, and this little hand strap's 50 bucks, you're going to be extremely happy. Also keeps you from accidentally dropping the camera, and when your hand gets sweaty out in the field, you can let go of the camera for a second, you know, and obviously it's not going to drop. Um, so those are all the differences between the 50S and the 50R. Um, I hope you like this video. If you do, I don't have any affiliate links. I don't sell anything. I'm trying to give useful information. I answer tons of emails and comments every day. I read every comment, so any donation is greatly welcome. And uh, I've been saving up for this camera for over half a year. So, I, you know, I kind of hate it when I, people say, Oh, you must be rich. You know, you got another medium format camera. I've been waiting for this camera for 10 years. I didn't know who would make it, obviously. But I have been waiting for this camera for 10 years. And you're damn right. I've been saving up for it for half a year, basically. And so, you know, I, I, and I kind of despise those comments. Oh, you're rich. You got too many for me. I said, really? You know, it depends on what you prioritize in life. Listen, I don't have a wife. I don't have any kids. I live really simply. So don't give me this. Ah, oh, you got two medium format cameras. You're rich. Like, Cut it out with that nonsense, okay? Because that's a, that's a stinking lie. Um, I think the only reason some people say that crap is to piss me off. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Uvidimse and dosvidanya, as the Russians would say. Paka, hasta luego, and uh, catch you later. This has been another video from the loco gringo bendejo. <laughs> My Spanish sucks, right? I don't know Spanish. I know Russian pretty good, and Latin, and ancient Greek. But you don't speak ancient Greek or, or Prakrit. They're dead languages. But I can always learn. Yeah, thank you for watching. Goodbye.